Hi, my name is Bree, and I have the privilege of serving as Chief of Staff here at Transformation Church. At TC, our vision is to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. And we just want to say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you're watching from. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We believe that God has a word just for you. So let's jump into today's message. Today's message may be the most important message in the series because I have to teach you something that you need in the kingdom for you to succeed. Um, so I'm just going to go right into it. Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. This has been one of our anchor scripture, scriptures in the series, along with Matthew 6, 33. Read this. This is Jesus' first message, and I'm going to read it out the Amplified because it just touched my shando in a really good way today. Repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking. Regret past sins. Live your life in a way that proves repentance. Hear what I just said. Live your life in a way that proves I've turned. The word repent just means turn. Turn to God. He said, I don't want you to do it at the end of service in a prayer and then live like you have not repented. I need you to live in such a way that it proves you have turned to God. It says, seek God's purpose for your life, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Another translation that Jesus says is the kingdom of heaven is, everybody say here. And over the past five weeks, we have had a very simple syllabus for this entire series, for the foundation, because this is the last sermon in the beginning session of this kingdom series. All I wanted you to do is everybody say, see the kingdom, seek the kingdom, share the kingdom, serve the kingdom, and shout out to all the hundreds of people in Atlanta that came to serve Atlanta yesterday, y'all. Homeless shelters, food banks, we packaged over 10,000 meals. It was phenomenal. We have to serve what God wants us to do in the sphere of influence he's given us to be a part of the kingdom. But this week, I want to give you one more S. And this one I kind of like because it's, it's an affinity of mine. Write this down. Today, I'm going to teach you how to have style in the kingdom. No, 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 no. Now, everybody say style in the kingdom. Now, this is something that I've noticed um, in 2023, that a lot of people do not know the difference between fashion and style. I I'm going to give you an education real quick, just so that you can understand there is a complete difference between fashion and style. You ever seen somebody that has money and they walk into a store and they buy Louis everything, Gucci everything, Prada everything, uh, Michael Kors everything, and they put everything together head to toe. We see that you spend a lot of money on that outfit and you have the right fashion, but it still don't look right. Like I know that was made out of the same material, but for some reason, it looked like you trying. That looks very reachy. Y'all ever met the reachy people? Like, hey, I... <laughs> if you're not laughing, it's you. <laughs> it's you. I got my Abercrombie and Fitch sweater, and I got my Abercrombie and Fitch hat, and I got my Abercrombie and jeans, and I got my Abercrombie clown. You have fashion, but you don't have but where are all my people that can go to the thrift store? Ross, Marshalls. Oh, come on. How many people can hit a sale rack? I need to know where my people are. How many people can go to Target, Walmart? The whole outfit may cost $19.99. Oh, y'all don't know, y'all. I need to know where my people are at, okay? It don't matter how expensive it is. Yes, this shirt was 99 cents and worn by somebody else. 
But when I put this shirt with these pants, with that jacket, when I step out, I don't have fashion. What I have? Style. And the truth of the matter is that this same thing applies to our Christian faith. That a lot of people got prayer, got prophecy, got all the worship songs, all the Bible scriptures, got all the judgment, got all the repenting that you need to do. They know everything, the Greek, the Hebrew. They got all the theological theological degrees and they got all the titles, bishop, deacon, (laughs) apostle. Yet when they put it on, that's all the right stuff. But it's, you don't wear it well. You've been fashioned in faith but you haven't been styled by the Spirit. Oh, you've been fashioned. We see you got it on, but it still look a little prideful. We know you go to church, but you won't talk to me at the job. It don't look good on you. you, you you're, you're talking about political parties and what's right for abortion and what's right for being woke and what's right, but you don't have love. You judge everything, but you don't have love. You got fashion. You don't got no style. Let me prove it to you in scripture because somebody would give me the Bible, Pastor Mike. We're going to say that in the Bible. Okay. 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have what? Love. Which is a fruit of the If you ain't been styled by the Spirit yet. But you got red. You got all that. But you don't have love. You got fashion, not style. (laughs) If you do that but don't have love, you are like a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. I wish I could do the MLT version. It would just say, if you do that and don't have love, you're annoying. (laughs) A cymbal or a gong just going off, that is what? It's not painful. It's annoying. I want to get away from it. Believers who do not rap, All that God has given them in the fruits of the Spirit, guess what you are? Annoying. Nobody wants to be around you because you have not been styled by the Spirit. It says, if I have the gift of prophecy, I see you in the future. (laughs) Mary. But... You have prophecy and can fathom all knowledge. You know you real smart. And if I have the faith that can move mountains, but I don't have love, watch what it says. I am nothing. Fold it up. Get out the prayer closet. You're wasting time if you don't let the Spirit style you in love. If I give, oh, because here here it comes. What? I'm one of the largest givers <laughs> in our church. Good, good, good. You give with your hands, but you have given nothing with your heart. If you give all your possessions to the poor and give over your body to hardship, I'm a martyr, persecuted for the gospel. When people say that in the Western world, Somebody commented on your Instagram post? Like there's people in Asia that if they hold the Bible, you got several of them. But if they hold the Bible, they can be thrown in jail or killed. But if you suffer any hardship, 
that I might boast, but I don't have love, I gain nothing. What I'm saying is, what good is it for us to gain all of these fashionable faith garments and not let the Holy Spirit style us to where they actually look presentable and watch this, attractive. See, I don't know why believers don't think that the whole reason we're supposed to bear fruit is because we want people to want to get to take a bite. Tasting that the Lord is good. When we look at your life, though, in the kingdom, it doesn't look appetizing. Y'all ever seen somebody's outfit that you know you can't wear, but the way they wear, wore it made you think like, I need to figure out how to get my body into the shape. Oh, shut up. They wore that so good that it makes me want to, and that's why uh, 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 undergarment spanks and, and all, people be squeezing all their little guts in. Just why? Because I desire to put something on that I may not be fit to wear yet, but whoever wore it, it was so attractive. It was styled so good that it made me want to make a, everybody say this word, change. Oh, this is going to be a key word today. Everybody say change. <laughs> what I'm telling you is um, when Jesus came to the earth to present the kingdom, he was styled different. They were in a season, in a time where they wanted a religious leader to come and overthrow the Roman government. And Jesus was like, yeah, uh-uh. Pretty much going to do only what I see the father doing. I'm going to wear this different. And y'all want me to come and, 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 and like just start chopping people out? No, 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 no. I'm going to love people. I'm going to do the, op oh, you don't want me to heal somebody because it's the Sabbath? No, I'm going to touch them and heal them. Oh, 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 kids aren't supposed to come to me. Let the children come. He was styled. What I want you to know that the garments that God is asking us to wear in our faith have to be styled by the Holy Spirit so that we can actually look different than culture. And right now, all of our actions and reactions are the same as the people who don't believe in our God. And you actually think it's good and you say stuff like, I'm just being me. In the kingdom, you give up just being you because you don't just represent you. You get the kingdom fit to you in a brand new way. And that's why as we end this series, I decided to go to one of the most complex um, parables in the gospel that talks about the kingdom. Because if we can understand or get knowledge or, or get light on what I think is probably the hardest or most complex um, 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 idea of the kingdom that Jesus lays out, all the other ones are going to be super simple because you're going to go back and study these. Because there's this little phrase I want everybody to remember in your personal Bible study throughout the week. And I want you to find everything that it says in the Bible after that and really absorb it. The kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is like. Every time you hear the kingdom of heaven is like, I want you to think of the king of kings, Jesus, trying to help you understand what he wants the kingdom to look like. So I just wrote down a few of them just so you can get it. In the Bible, I want you to look for these. The kingdom of heaven is like a seed that is sowed. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast. The kingdom of heaven is like bread. You need to read the parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. The king of, kingdom of heaven is like a man looking for a fine pearl. The kingdom of heaven is like letting down your nets in a lake. The kingdom of heaven is like the little children. There's all of these ideas where it says the kingdom of heaven is like, and then it goes on to give you this thing. And it's God trying to, for everybody who wants to seek him, uncover truth that is sitting in plain sight through what we call a parable, parabole, a truth hidden along with the story. I'm going somewhere. 
This is probably the hardest parable for me to understand in the scripture. And I thought if we broke it down together, because God has given me revelation, then you would no longer be king, dumb, and all the rest of them would be super easy. Matthew chapter 22, verse 1 through 14. This is a lot of Bible. And it's going to be shocking when you hear how some of this stuff goes down. Don't turn the channel yet. I'm going to explain this whole thing, all right? Matthew chapter 22, verse 1. Jesus also told them other parables. He said, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to notify those who were invited. But they all refused to notify, um, they all refused to come. So he sent other servants to tell them, the feast has been prepared. The bulls and the fattened calf have been killed and everything is ready. Come to the kingdom. I mean, come to the banquet. But the guest he had invited ignored them and went their own way. One to his farm, another to his business. Others seized his messengers, this is crazy, and insulted them and killed them. I ain't coming to your banquet. Die. What? It's a little extreme. The king was furious, and he sent out his army to destroy the murderers and burn their town. And he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready, and the guests I invited aren't worthy of the honor. Now go out to the streets, corners, and invite everyone you see. Who did he say to invite? Everyone. What was the qualification that they'd be able to come? You see them. Not that they're good. Not that they're bad. The only qualification is invite everyone you what? See. Okay, all right. We're going somewhere. Invite everyone you see. So the servants brought in everyone they could find. I love the Bible. This is how the kingdom is illustrated. Bring in everyone, good and bad alike. That right there messes most people up. Because the king is inviting the people you don't like to the kingdom. Oh, this is about to get nasty. And the banquet hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothing for a wedding. Friend, he asked, how is it that you are here without wedding clothes? But the man had no reply. Then the king went very extreme and said to his aides, bind him up. Get him tied up by his feet and throw him into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. What? Let's be honest. There are some passages in the Bible that you read and you'll be like, all right, I did my 10 minutes for the day. <laughs> don't understand. Okay, y'all going to leave me out here by myself. There's sometimes you read your Bible and I'm like, don't get that. All right. I have read that passage so many times and been like, all right, maybe when I get to heaven, this the first. Does anybody got a when I get to heaven question? Come on, let's, if, if you have a when I get to heaven question, like, where are the dinosaurs in the Bible, Lord? <laughs> like, just, we all have these, like, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Eve, why, baby? Why? Period. <laughs> You'll get it later. I, I, what I'm saying. <laughs> What I'm saying is, like, this is one of those passages that if you don't understand the framework, the context, as well as the culture it's set in, you will miss the illustration of the what? Kingdom. So I want you to go back and walk through this with me in the next 40 minutes so you can get this revelation that changed my life. The king throws a party. The people he wanted to come to the party don't come. He says, I done already spent the dough, paid the price, 
set up the food. The sacrifice has been made, Jesus. The kingdom is ready for you to receive. If they don't want it, I'm going to find somebody who does. I'm just breaking it down. Go tell these other distinguished people that the food is ready. Oh, they're too busy with the blessing that the king has provided. That they do, oh, I'm going to go to my farm. I'm going to work on my car. My kids got soccer. Okay. So what ends up happening is, I'm about to get ignorant with this message. What ends up happening is the king says, I'm trying to invite you into the kingdom because I made you with a purpose in the kingdom, not a purpose that you're trying to discover in the universe to make sure that your, 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 your vibes are fulfilled so that you can be at center and peace with all that is. A, that's not why you were born. The Bible says before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. I had a plan for you. I had a purpose for you. I had a reason you were supposed to come here and it was for, for, to fulfill a spot in the kingdom. So I want you to come sit with me as the king. I want you to learn my character. I want you to get used to eating at a certain level. They too busy? Okay. Hold on. And they killed messengers? They crucified the people I just sent to tell them that I had made a sacrifice? Cool. They'll get consequences, but just go to the streets. Today, this message is for the streets. This is for all the people who don't think they're worthy to be in the presence of the king. And I know some of y'all are fighting just to be in the room right now and to actually be online right now because of what you did. God is inviting you to the kingdom no matter what your prior history looks like. God is inviting y'all. Some of y'all need to be clapping because if you put on the screen where you were this time last year or where you were this time 10 years ago, matter of fact, this time yesterday, if it had not been for the grace of God. He literally says, go to the streets and find everyone that you see. Not everyone that acts like a Christian. The kingdom is not a club. Okay. That's why there's no members in a kingdom. A lot of us grew up in churches where there were members. How many members you got? Membership doesn't matter because membership just means you hold a spot, but it doesn't mean you have to be active because many of us have gym <laughs> memberships. So on your keychain, you go to Crunch? Yeah. Only Crunch that you've been doing is the bar. <laughs> you ain't. Let's be honest. How many of us have been members of something we were not active in? The kingdom's not a club for members. It is an association for ambassadors. You don't get into the kingdom unless you plan on representing the kingdom. We don't come to church to just get something. We come to church to get something to give it away. And this is the difference between members and ambassadors. And the king is saying, I need good people and bad people. I can convert people in the kingdom. You worried about what they look like before they come sit at my table. But bring them all. Everybody said, bring them out, bring them out. <laughs> I don't know, some of y'all too, uh, too safe for that, but there was, I think it was T.I., yeah, you know what I'm saying? He was like, bring them out, bring them out. I, I, I don't know. I just feel the bring them out energy. Because so many times we're worried about cleaning up people that need to meet the king. The king doesn't matter if they're clean. Because he already has everything they need to be at the banquet. And because of your insecurity... And what other church people would think, we keep people away from the kingdom because we don't want to be uncomfortable. 
But he says, matter of fact, go get everybody. The hood people you don't like, go get them. Well, her dress is too short. Well, they're still addicted to, you know, I know that they're, I, I don't know how I know, but I know <laughs> that they're still addicted to some things. Well, I don't know. I mean, they have ADHD and I don't know if they'll be able to sit. You go stand in the back. Walk. I don't. The king is saying that I want everybody to come into the kingdom. And watch this. Don't you get in the way. Don't you get in the way of them meeting me. So he tells them, bring everybody. And when they come in, everybody like, dang, your house nice. Y'all know how you ever been in somebody's house that's like levels up from your house? Like, I don't even know what's up there, but I just think it's how high the ceiling is. Dang, is this crystal? <laughs> like, and everybody's coming in, and what you don't understand if you don't have context of the period, now watch this, this is a huge distinction, that any time a king threw a party in that day and age, he had clothes custom prepared for everybody who was coming to the party. So when he sees the gentleman that does not have the clothes on, it was not because clothes hadn't been provided. There was a standard in the king's presence that he did not expect you to come in with, but he would provide for you everything you needed. I'm about to preach this text. When you got into his presence, uh-oh. So I got to let you know, as we are inviting people into the kingdom and having you come into the kingdom, point number one, there is a standard in the kingdom. Everybody say there's a standard. And this is where most people get messed up in the church because they want to hold a standard that God's not holding. Okay. God's standard. I'm going to tell you what it is. Watch this one word. Righteousness right standing with him. Everybody say, there's a standard in the kingdom. Righteousness. Okay. When you come into the king's presence, certain stuff ain't allowed. And this is where most people get defeated because it's like, who can be righteous? Like, how do I get righteous? I thought I was righteous, but then I wasn't righteous no more. And that's why some people get saved every Sunday. That is an act of being king dumb. Once you put your faith and fidelity into Jesus Christ, your eternity is secure forever. Will you mess up? Probably. That's why he tells you to repent and turn back to him. But praying every night before you go to bed, Lord, forgive me for all the stuff I did today. And if I'm dying, Lord, let me see you in heaven tomorrow, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you will keep me. And Lord, I am praying in the sin tomorrow. But Lord, because I'm praying right now, I thank you, Lord. <laughs> These are things grown people do, y'all. I, 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 you're laughing, but you, some of y'all did it this week. Some of y'all do it. Every time you get on a plane, Lord, I just ask you, forgive me. I don't have time to talk about it right now, but Jesus was the perpetuation of all of our sins. He took on our burden. He paid the price for effort. So when we put our faith in him, our eternity is secure. But there's this little word that I want to teach you. It's called sanctification. Now, we don't use this word no more, and I know it's going to offend some people. But sanctification is the act of being made holy. So it's like God will take me as I am, but he will not leave me. As I am and most of us are salty because you thought God was gonna leave you alone after you said I'm saved 
And the rest of your life is the tension between what you want and what he wants. And today I want to let you know if you're coming to the kingdom, everybody say, come on. Come on, come on. We want you to come. But there is a standard. Everybody say, there is a standard. Okay. So since there is a standard and the standard is righteousness, I mean, it means, let me just say it like this. Nobody can meet the standard. I just want to point blank tell you, all your good works will never meet the standard of righteousness. The Bible says it like this, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So what you have to do is receive righteousness by accepting Jesus Christ. When you accept Jesus, you get his righteousness. So when God looks at you, he don't see your mess. He sees his Jesus's sacrifice. So it's like having somebody's ID badge in a restricted area. You don't got access. But as long as you have the badge of somebody who does have access, you can walk into places and spaces that you are not qualified. I feel this thing. That you are not qualified for. Not on your own merit. Not on your own identification. But for what you are carrying and what you have accepted, you get access because of somebody else's sacrifice. Okay, I'm just trying to explain this whole thing to you. So he's saying, because you can't hold the standard, I'm going to provide the clothes of repentance for you. Okay, that's why all through the Bible, it's a good study. I don't got the time to go through it. But look all the places in the Bible where righteousness have some type of correlation with clothing. Job chapter 29 verse 14. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. He said, I need you to take off what you came in here with. And I need you to watch the title of my message. Change clothes. Today, God is asking you to make a decision. Keep on your fashion or get styled by the Holy Spirit. Change clothes. I know that helped you get through your trauma, traumatic childhood. But now you have been invited to the presence of the king. Your attitude, the way you handle grief, the way you snap up and judge people, I need you to change clothes. And too many Christians are sitting in here with their high school letterman on talking about victories you won in different seasons. Y'all still sitting in here in your wedding dress, buttons popping. Meat hanging out everywhere. It no longer fits, but you would rather be nostalgic in a season of religion. I want to go back to the good old days where we just... But you're still mean. You were mean then, you're mean now. You have not changed clothes. No, weed was the thing you had to go to for peace to get through a season of your life. But now you've been invited to the kingdom. And now it's not that you can't stop smoking. I really just don't want to. Can we be honest? There's some stuff that we could give up. But just because we want our will and not his, we don't change clothes. And in the kingdom, everybody say there is a standard. <laughs> but watch this. Write this down. Everything you need to meet the standard is provided. Man, this freed me because I did not know that my works were not the thing that were attract was attracting God to me. I thought I had to pray 15 times. I thought I had to wake up at 5 a.m. because Prophet is Brenda Todd woke up at 5 a.m. to pray. I, no, 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 no. I, th I thought that I had to fast every so often. I thought that all of those things were dead works because they were coming from a place of fear. 
I wasn't serving the king because I loved him. I was serving the king because I didn't want to go to hell. And the, and, and the hell the hell scare tactic will keep people at the altar, which makes the preacher feel like he was effective. And the truth is you didn't even study. So you just tried to scare people. The altars were full. You scared them. If, if lightning struck the building right now, and we were all taken up to glory, where would you spend eternity? I don't know. Well, you need to come to the altar. Here I am again, Lord. <laughs> no, no, no. But the truth of the matter is, God said, like, hold on, you can live in a way that you accept what has been provided. This king would have had somebody at the door telling everybody, here's your garments. Here's your robe of righteousness. Here's everything that you need to live a life that is pleasing to the king. And there was one man that was in the banquet. So I want you to understand where he was. I'm trying to help you unpack what the kingdom of God is like. He was at the banquet. He was in the kingdom. But he decided to take the clothes but not put them on. So I want you to think about what that is a metaphor for. That God tells you how to live and what he wants you to do, but you willingly decide to deny what he's saying. It would be the ultimate sign of disrespect for you to come to the banquet and somebody paid money to have a tailor or a seamstress make you a garment and you decide to not change clothes in that atmosphere. So the king walks through and he's looking at everybody pleased with everybody that's wearing the clothes and he comes up to this one man and he says, um, sir, look, I want you to see the word he started out with. Look what he said. He said, friend. He was not mad at this man. He was actually concerned that something may be wrong. God will always approach you in the kingdom with friend first. He's not trying to lay down the hammer, friend. Hey, why are you still doing that? Why are you still sleeping with that person? Hey, why are, you, why are you still doing business with shady people? Friend, it's not like, what are you doing? We don't do that in the kingdom. No. Friend, why are you lying and then getting on a platform and leading people in worship? Friend, why are you judging and not loving? Friend. And look what the Bible says. The man had... No reply. He ain't had nothing to say. Which tells me that he didn't even have a good reason why he wasn't wearing it. He just didn't want to. Today, I have to talk to the people who have been immature and not doing the things that God wants for no other reason than you just don't want to. He's been telling you to leave that friend group and you just don't want to. He's been telling you to be focused on his word and you just don't want to. The, the, the series on Netflix are, are, are more important to you than what the king is asking you to change into. And what I'm telling everybody, and y'all, this has convicted me up and down as the pastor. God said, you better change into what I've provided or you're going to be kicked out this party. I said, Lord, I thought you was a loving. He said, but there is a standard here. And I'm coming to you as friend. And I'm saying to you, stop using that as an excuse. Change clothes. But if your only thing is because I don't want to, because it might be hard to, because that means I'm going to have to change some things, that's not a good enough excuse. So I'm going to tell you something that happens when people come to the kingdom and they get um, a garment put on them and, and, and it doesn't fit yet because this is what ends up happening. A lot of people get um, a, a garment and it's, it, it looks too big. It actually, matter of fact, Holy Spirit, could you um, come up here and, and, and help me? What I found out in the kingdom, 
that, that, that God gives us a tailor. And his name is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that is supposed to lead us into all truth. Could you bring me the garment that, that, that you said was made for me? This is many times how the Holy Spirit does it. He gives us something that he has prepared for us. A garment that we're, hold on. What do you want me to do with that? Put it on? That's not my size. That doesn't, oh, let me just try on the jacket. I'm not wearing nothing that don't fit me. I just told you I wasn't wearing nothing, Holy Spirit, that don't fit me. I'm not serving people who don't pay me. This don't fit. I don't even like speaking. So why would you call me? Look at this. This doesn't fit yet. Nuh uh. And we take off prematurely what the Holy Spirit wants to fit to us because it doesn't fit immediately. And the Holy Spirit has been telling some of us, put it on. And you complaining the whole time, this doesn't fit. He said, you don't know my skill set. So now we standing here mad. Ain't going to even take off what we had on. Give me this. I can't believe you got me out here serving people. You done took away all my little swag. And you're going to tell me to come into your presence. Do you know who I was in the world? Do you know what people say about me? Do you know how much I mean to other people? And you're going to tell me to put on something that don't fit? Holy Spirit, I'm up here looking stupid. Oh, you want me to pull it back up? Want me to serve God, love my enemies? You want me to represent you in the kingdom? Look how dumb I look. You want me to go outside like this? You want me? This don't fit me yet. See, the thing that the Holy Spirit is saying when you come into the kingdom, I'm going to give you the tailor called the Holy Spirit. And what I need you to do is if your garment doesn't fit, everybody say yet. Keep seeing the tailor. <laughs> There's a standard in the kingdom. Everything provided for you to meet the standard is already there. He, he, if your garment didn't fit, I brought the Holy Spirit. Jesus even says to the disciples, it's better for you that I go so that you can get the tailor, the Holy Spirit, to come. Because he's going to lead you. Cut off what don't need to be there. Change what don't fit yet. He said, I need you to come. And this is the thing I need you to know about the kingdom. In the kingdom, one size does not fit all. See, the problem is I'm comparing my outfit to somebody else's. And mine hasn't been fitted yet. <sighs> okay. I'm going to come to the secret place. I'm going to come to prayer. I'm going to come to the place that's uncomfortable. And Holy Spirit, take my measurements. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Nobody's actually seen this before. Nobody knows how much, how much weight I've picked up. Um, could you tailor this a little bigger so that people can't see where I'm actually at? No, no, no. This is for you. No, no, this is for me. Like, I just, matter of fact, do you think this will ever fit me? Do you think this calling will ever fit me? Do, do, you, do you think that I can actually live pure and holy? Like, do you actually think that I can stop cussing people out? I don't have faith that these clothes will ever fit. 
And many people leave the kingdom because they don't think that it's worth letting the Holy Spirit make them. In this parable, saying change clothes. Everybody say change clothes. Change clothes. But let the Holy Spirit be your tailor. Write that down. The Holy Spirit is my tailor. This man decides to defy the king and doesn't wear the clothes. If I'm watching this in the room, I'm like, I'm going to put it on because I don't want to be bound at and thrown out the party. Gnashing of teeth seems very evil. <laughs> but in the kingdom, a lot of us feel like what God's called us to do doesn't fit. So now you're going to have to get tailored. And why do people not stand on the tailoring block? I'm going to give you four things because somebody's going to change clothes before the end of this service. The reason why people don't stand on the tailoring block is because tailoring by the Holy Spirit takes transparency. John is my actual stylist and tailor. So as, as some of you know, I was um, 50 three pounds heavier this time last year, okay? All of my clothes actually fit like this around me. <laughs> and one thing that I had to understand about a tailor is no matter what it looks like in the moment, he has the skill set to fit it to me. So one of the things that was very uncomfortable, uncomfortable to me at the beginning of this journey of tailoring is when the tailor had to actually measure my inseam. Now, many of you don't know what that is, but the Holy Spirit will get down into vulnerable areas. Hold on. No, I, I, wanna, I wanna make this very plain. The Holy Spirit wants to get the exact measurements in the places that nobody else actually goes. John got down one day to measure my inseam. And I said, brother, what are you actually doing? I'm a married man. I don't go like that, baby. And he began to explain to me that if he doesn't get the exact measurements of where I'm at, everybody say today. Not where I think I'm at. Not what, where the jeans I wear are. It's not custom fit to me if he doesn't measure me today. And I believe that there has to be another level of transparency when we come into the kingdom for God to measure where I'm at. Everybody say today. today. The Holy Spirit wants to come in to the places that are vulnerable and measure you. Another vulnerable place for me is my gut. Because um, for years to hide my gut, I would just wear big hoodies. But the one thing about John is he would say stuff like, you've been eating, huh? <laughs> Vacation was good to you, huh? And I would be like, what are you talking about? He said, I'm trying to fit this suit, but I can't go based off of the measurements we had last time. Based, based off the last time you worshiped me. Today, I got to measure you a new and a fresh. God is asking everybody, when you're coming into this party, I want you to invite the Holy Spirit to come and get, oh, dang. Could you just pin it up? Because I, I, this is frustrating now at this point to try to live how the king wants me to live. And every, just at least, could you, Holy Spirit, could you at least make what looks bad Stay up? Could you at least let... And the Holy Spirit is telling me for every person that's out there right now, he's saying, stay in the place to let me work. Yeah. I don't know who this is for, but somebody is about to walk and take off the garment that is going to fit you. It just doesn't fit you. Everybody say yet. 
Stay in the place where the Holy Spirit can lead you into all truth. Why are you telling this? You can't understand the kingdom without the Holy Spirit. And most people think the Holy Spirit is a feeling. He is a person. And if you've never watched the series called The Upgrade, I need you to go back and watch a series called The Upgrade because I want to introduce you to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is supposed to lead and guide you into all truth. I don't know how to be what God wants me to be in the kingdom unless the Holy Spirit leads me, helps me, walks with me. He's the paraclete. You remember I said parable, the one who comes, the, the, the uh, uh, truth alongside of a uh, hidden a story alongside of a truth. Well, paraclete is the one who comes alongside you to help you. The Holy Spirit wants to help you. Well, go ahead and pin me and start making this feel better. And I got an attitude. Don't stick me, Holy Spirit. And now I'm standing here. And the, the, the Holy Spirit's trying to style me. But people don't stay in this place. Watch this. They don't get the tailoring. Watch this. Because tailoring takes time. If you are going to be everything that God has called you to be in the kingdom, this will not be a quick work. This is going to be a work that takes. Do you know how long it's taken me? To get that lustful thing that was planted on the inside of me as a young teenager. To get that thing out of my life to the point to where I can see it from a mile away and resist that temptation. It has taken time. Time of the Holy Spirit saying stuff like this. Don't turn the TV on right now. Well, God, this is how I unwind. I said don't turn the TV on right now. Change clothes. Let me tailor you. Well, nobody else has to do this. I am not making this garment for anybody else. I'm specifically making it for you. Don't go see that movie. But Michael B. Jordan is in that movie. I'm just telling you. Don't go eat at that restaurant. But the food is good there. He said, I'm tailoring you. I'm trying to fit what your purpose is in the kingdom to you. But you got to give me, everybody say time. Church, that's why I told you that this kingdom message, this is the last sermon in the foundational series. But I'm telling you, this is going to take time. Because as I unfold these messages, the Holy Spirit says, I'm about to keep working on this garment on you until it fits you like a glove. And the Holy Spirit says, if you run from me. Nope, I'm my old self. It's my birthday. Don't look, don't look at the God thing around my knees but I'm a businessman. I'm going to be a shark in business. I'm listening to all these people. Don't mind that I have a calling still around me. That no matter how much I want to run towards something else, I've been marked because I've got something on. And people are looking at me and it's tough. Because of the call of God on your life, many can, but you still cannot. Is there anybody that's tried to wild out? Tried to do all the wrong things. Tried to be what everybody else is. But I have been marked by God. Why everybody else didn't get caught? It's because there's something around your life. Oh, my God. There's something that trips your steps up. Everybody else running in sin. But you stumbling in sin. You don't even look right. You can't even cuss right. Email the wrong person. Tell your boss. How you email your boss? It's because there's something that the old folks saying that are, is on your life that just won't leave you alone. It's that calling. And at some point, enough will happen. Hey, what's up, Holy Spirit? 
<laughs> he said, welcome back. They caught you with your pants down. Oh, yeah. And what do you do? You start the process over again because I'm I way different now. And some of you are so frustrated if you would just stay in the place he told you to stay in. If you would just let him keep doing the work on you. Well, when am I going to get married? When he finishes. Okay, let me stop. And most people won't stay on the tailoring block because tailoring takes transparency. Somebody, this is never going to leave you ever again. Tailoring takes time. Watch this one. Tailoring takes talking. Hey, um, I just want to let you know, um, my arm, I just don't want to be constricted in this. You got me? Yes, sir. Bring this up a little bit. Yeah, but, but I don't know. I've seen some other people with it cuffed, like double cuffed. Let's try it. Let's try it. No, I like the, no, nah. matter of fact, do what you think. I'm, I've never designed clothes before. I've never made a purpose before. I've never formed or fashioned anybody. This is what you do, right? Yep. So how long have you been doing this? All day, every day. All day, every day. Since the beginning of time? Yes, sir. How many people have you helped reach destiny? As many as would let me. As many as would let me. It's in the relationship, the talking to the Holy Spirit. That it, it turns less into something that he's cutting and poking. It turns into a relationship. One of the things I'll tell you about me and my tailor, we're actually best friends. Because <laughs> we spend so much time in vulnerable positions together. <laughs> my... <v> <laughs> This man has been with me through all the transitions. He, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll punch you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> he's, he's seen my transformation. He's walked with me. So now it's no longer a job for us. It's time we get to spend together. Most of us, we actually enjoy our time together. I get off the plane last night. John says, call me when you land. I, call, I mean, Holy Spirit says, call me. Well, John <laughs> says, call me when you land. Okay, you're, you just switch back. You role play, okay? He says, call me when you land. I call him. He shows up at my house, and we talk for longer than it took to actually get my measurements. Because now it's not about just getting the job done. It's about spending time with my friend. The Holy Spirit wants to tailor make your kingdom purpose to you. But he wants to do it from an area of not just religion or regiment. He wants to do it through relationship. And that means you're going to have to talk to the Holy Spirit. Practically, what does that look like, Pastor Mike? I talk to God all day. Lord, help me not go in here and say anything in this meeting that doesn't represent you. Holy Spirit, put a bridle on my tongue so that I can represent you well. Lord, Natalie's mad at me, and honestly, I'm mad at her. Holy Spirit, help me not cause strife in my marriage. And the Holy Spirit begins to talk to me, walk with me, teach me, or what the Bible says, lead me into all what? Truth. Holy Spirit, you got your measurement, so um, could you take what you say is going to fit me, and could you start... Uh, I might have to take something off. Could you, 
Holy Spirit, I really like these. They were kind of expensive too. <laughs> but I'm going to have to take off something. Well, this messes up my outfit now, Holy Spirit. And now I have a choice. This is uncomfortable. Just take it off. Take it off. It's more uncomfortable to keep it on while you're trying to work on me. How did my pants get so long? <laughs> when I was dressed how culture wanted me to dress, they look right. But as I start to take off, who gave me Kevin Durant's pants? I didn't even realize because it was fashion that these actually don't fit. When the Holy Spirit starts working on you, there are things that you may think make you who you are that no longer fit. And I look like a fool up here. Until the Holy Spirit calls me back to tell me I have something prepared for you. Let me tell you the last reason why people don't get tailored. I hope you get this in your mind right now. The Holy Spirit is coming to tailor make your purpose in the kingdom. And the king is asking you to do two words. Change. Close. Tailoring takes transparency. Tailoring takes time. Tailoring takes talking. Last one. Tailoring takes trust. I got to believe he knows the design. I got to believe however he going to fit that to me, it's going to work. I could be worried all night that I'm going to disappoint somebody and I'm not going to be able to do what I want to do. And the Holy Spirit is saying, this is what I do. Trust me with your life. I want you to change clothes. I'm going to be very practical at the end of this message. I was trying to think, how do I bring all of this kingdom stuff down to just a very simple truth? The king is inviting you to a party. And he's saying the Holy Spirit is here to make it look like what you need it to look like. But you got to give me time, transparency, talk to me, and trust me. This, this year, the Holy Spirit's going to start cutting off things that you think you need. It takes me to John 14, where it talks about we are the vine, or he is the vine, and we are the branches, and that we have to be connected to him. And then there's this part that you go down. It says that he cuts on the vines that are producing fruit. So it makes sense to me. The reason he starts tailoring on that vine is because he wants it to produce even more fruit. When the Holy Spirit cuts the sleeve off of something that somebody's going through, I don't need anybody in the church to be judging because the outfit is not ready yet. We need to be worried about what God has placed on our lives. And this is what I'm saying to every kingdom citizen. Don't judge people who are missing pieces from their garment. Pastor Mike, why are you saying this? Because me as the pastor of this church, I'm still getting tailored. The Holy Spirit this week cut some stuff off of me that I thought I was good with. The Holy Spirit challenged me this week to love my wife in a different way, to honor her in a different way. This week, guess what? The tailor is not making you just one outfit. <laughs> He's available at all times to make sure that you are ready to go into any atmosphere that you have been called into. And when the tailor gets done making what he's making for you, this is the last part I need y'all to understand. There will be a season where in the kingdom, he asks you to go and change 
where nobody can see you. Holy Spirit, I'm ready. This feels like isolation. This feels like, hold on, I don't want to do this. Um, am I relevant anymore? Nobody can see me. This is uncomfortable. Why is this happening? This is awkward for the people out there. <laughs> Holy Spirit, make my name great. Give me a platform. Don't let them forget me. This is real awkward. I want to say something. I want to defend myself because they don't understand what happened. Let me clap back one time. Or two times. <laughs> Could this happen faster? Don't touch that. <laughs> Have you still called me? Am I still important to you? Dang. I don't know if I even want to go out again. I don't know if I want to try again. I don't know if I want to forgive again. Holy Spirit, I don't think this is going to fit. Did I mention this is awkward? Holy Spirit, you're working. Holy Spirit, you're with me. Holy Spirit, you love me. Holy Spirit, you have a plan for me. Holy Spirit, you knew me before I was in my mother's womb. Holy Spirit, you desire to change me into the image of Jesus. Holy Spirit, what I've seen is not enough I'm ready you're not ready for me to come out yet no I got a website and a podcast and a mixtape <laughs> what you're doing in my life is private? Less of me. More of you. Not my will. But yours be done. Holy Spirit, help me change clothes. Now watch, all I'm thinking about right now is how long it took me to change. All I'm thinking about right now is how uncomfortable everybody else was while God made something custom for me. And there are some people in this room right now that the Holy Spirit has been doing a work on you that instead of letting him finish the work, you've been worried about everybody else. And I came to tell you that what God wants to do in your life, this fits me perfectly. But it took time, transparency, trust, 
and talking to the Holy Spirit. I can teach you everything that I can about the kingdom. But if you don't change clothes, decide to change clothes and let the Holy Spirit tailor this to you, you will spend the rest of your life in something that doesn't fit until you get frustrated. And the reason why people are deconstructing their faith and running away from the, the word of God is because they wouldn't let the Holy Spirit do the work that only the Holy Spirit can do. Can I tell you something? The pastor cannot give you the revelation of the kingdom. All I can do is tell you to seek it. All I've been trying to do for six weeks is say, this is what Jesus preached. This is what he wants us to study. This is what he wants us to go after. Stop believing for this, that, and the third. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6, seek first the what? Kingdom. And his righteousness, which is the robe he's already given you. And everything else you need, everything else you need, everything else you need will be added. But me saying that as your pastor, I'm pleading with you. That's not going to be enough. I've always had a pastor and I never sought the kingdom. Today I'm asking every person to make a decision. Change clothes. There's a standard here. And if you're going to be everything that God has called you to be, take off the garments you came in here with. Take off all of the guilt and the shame and the pain and the hurt and the frustration and the anger and the rage and all of the impure thoughts and all of the lust and all of the things that you thought fit you. And receive what the king has provided for you. Change. Close. Today I'm going to close service a little different. If you know there are some things that you've been still wearing. That the king is walking towards you. About to ask you why you still got that on. And you know it's time for you to change clothes. I'm not going to ask you what it is. But today, I want you to decide. Everybody say decide. I want you to decide to change clothes and let the tailor, the Holy Spirit, fit your kingdom calling to you. I was scared to become a pastor because it didn't fit. When I got called to be a youth pastor, it was by a fluke. It's because my parents started a church. And my mama said, you're supposed to do something with the youth. And my, in that time, I just thought it was convenient. It was just clothes in the kingdom that didn't fit yet. He said, let me work on your attitude. Let me work on your lust. Let me work on your transparency. Let me work on those areas that aren't right. And God kept giving me garments that didn't fit. All the way to where Bishop Gary said, I think you're supposed to be the pastor of the church. And I said, I think you miss God. <laughs> I, I, didn't I tell you? I literally told him, I was like, Bishop, I don't even like people that much. I was just wearing a garment that didn't fit yet. But as I keep letting the tailor cut on me, on my attitude, on my habits, on the way I talk to people, on the way I love people, he started to change me from the inside out. If there's an area in your life that you've still bear, been wearing old garments, garments you came into the kingdom with, and you're ready to change clothes in Atlanta, in this room, watching in Transformation Nation, I want you to stand right now. This is not for everybody, but there's some people in this room that know today is the day. This is a decision-making day. I'm going to put on what the king has provided. Oh, I feel the presence of God. And if that's you, wherever you are right now, I want you to begin to lift your hands. There's deliverance in this house. The king has sent the Holy Spirit. I feel this thing right now to help you change clothes. I'm about to pray for you, but what the Holy Spirit is about to do is he's about to start taking off those things that no longer fit you. The attitudes, the ideas, the principles, the precepts, those things that have been keeping you almost tied to what you wore before you came into the kingdom. And today there's deliverance and healing happening for you. 
God, we're here. Come on, hands lifted, everybody. God, we're here right now asking you to help us change clothes. Father, I thank you that in this moment right now, there are people that have been in the same garments for too long. And today, Father, you have provided through your son, Jesus Christ, a brand new robe of righteousness for us to wear. Today, Father God, we are deciding to accept your will, your way, your righteousness for our life. No longer will we run away from the Holy Spirit. But today, this will be a marker in our lives that we are saying, take my life. Take my life, Father God. Oh, I feel the presence of God. There is things that have been with you for years that God is saying, this is the last day that you're wearing that garment. You're about to put on righteousness. You're about to put on joy, love. The fruits of the Spirit are about to be your portion. Holy Spirit, we're asking you all over this world, from Atlanta to Tulsa, to every place in this world, Father God, help us to change clothes. And just together as a prayer, we say, take my life and mold it come on lift it up take my transform it said take my will conform it <laughs> to yours to yours we want what he wants us to wear come on let's put on the garments of the kingdom so take my this message and I need everybody to listen to me I spent too much time around the king without putting on what he provided for me and God told me to tell every person watching today is the day that you accept your kingdom calling not what you studied for not what people have told you today is the day that it doesn't matter if you feel like it doesn't fit yet. The Holy Spirit's going to help you. If you're in this room right now, or in Atlanta, or watching on rebroadcast, and you want to be clothed in righteousness, today I need you to accept Jesus. He's the only one that just how I had on all black, when Jesus came in, the Father sees me in all white now. <laughs> this is how he sees me. Because Jesus is the one that meets the standard of righteousness for me and you. If you want to live your life clothed in righteousness, today I want you to give your life to Jesus in this room. I'm telling you, it's the best decision I ever made. I went from being a liar, a manipulator, addicted to pornography, somebody who had a lot of bad stuff in their heart, and God said, uh-huh, I'm going to use all that. Submit that to me. Bring yourself to the king's table. And it's full of grace and mercy. Put on these clothes I have for you. And I'm going to allow you to fulfill your purpose. And that day changed everything for me. Today is your day of salvation. If that's you, and you want to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, if you want to change clothes right now in this moment, it's your time. On the count of three, I just want you to raise your hand in the room, in Atlanta, online, wherever you're at. One, you're making the greatest decision of your life. I feel the power of God right now. Two, 
I'm proud of you, but your name is about to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you want to give your life to Jesus, just lift your hands three right now. I see you, my brother. I see you, my sister. I see, oh, y'all better rejoice. I see you. I see you. I see you. I, oh, y'all, come on. I see you. Glory to God. A Transformation Church, we're a family. In Atlanta, I see you. I want everybody to pray this prayer for those who are coming to the kingdom today. Would you just lift your hands and say, God, thank you for preparing a place for me at your table. <laughs> today, I repent from my old life and I turn to you. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again with all power just for me. And today, I give you my life. You are the Lord of my life. Change me, renew me, transform me. I'm yours. Today, I change clothes. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give God praise? Y'all better act up. Oh, come on. We got new family in the kingdom. If you just prayed that prayer, I want you to text SAVE to the number on the screen. In Atlanta, I want you to know we're walking with you. And there's about 300 of y'all that are about to get baptized. Hear me, everybody, before we dismiss, listen to me. This is the start of this kingdom message. But the end here, do not put those old clothes back on. No, 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 this week you're gonna have an opportunity to put back on what no longer fits you. And the Holy Spirit is gonna whisper to you. He's gonna speak to you. He's gonna give you a sign. He's gonna give you a, watch this, friend. He's gonna give you a family member. He's gonna let something pop up on your Instagram screen. Listen and let the tailor do his work. Father, I thank you that this kingdom message is gonna go down into our hearts and we're gonna be everything that you've called us to be. I declare that this is gonna be the best week of us following you in the kingdom, that you're allowing us to take up our space and have the character to walk in full dominion. Father, let us never again put on those rags we used to wear when we did not let the Holy Spirit lead us. This will be your kingdom in us. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we agree. Somebody say amen. Until next week, go out and live a transformed life. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. We also want to say thank you to our faithful partners and givers here at Transformation Church. It's because of your generosity that this vision has been made possible. If you'd like to partner with us in giving, you can text GIVE to 828282, or you can visit our website. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other sermons, as well as our live Sunday experience that begins at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now go out and live a transformed life. Thank you.